Hey guys, today I'm going to show you every step of my process from taking this and turning it into this. So for this logo, I don't actually have the components of the logo that they use to make this themselves. So I'm going to have to break it down into its individual components. Now I was lucky enough to get a PDF with the actual feather. So we're going to go ahead and import the feather into Adobe Illustrator right now. So I'm just going to go ahead, look for the feather JPEG, and there we go. So I'm going to blow this up a little bit, and I'm going to select the feather. Now I'm going to go up here to Image Trace, and I'm going to select Silhouette. Simple as that. Looks great. Two colors, it's all we need. So I'm going to go ahead, go File, Export, Save As, and we're going to save it as a DWG, which is an AutoCAD drawing. So we'll save that on the desktop. So now we're going to go ahead and open up AutoCAD. Now AutoCAD is a paid program. It's the software I'm comfortable with. I'm sure you can do the same thing with SketchUp or any other program out there, but this is what we're going to use. So now we're going to go ahead and open up the feather. So I'm going to go over to the image here and I'm going to say X for explode. For whatever reason, you need to explode it twice. X explode. And now we can select the individual components. This is the hatching, this solid color here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. All right, we got it all. So now you see if I go ahead and select these lines and it is a complete polyline, if I hit delete, it's gone. So let's undo that. And this is what we wanna be left with, just the individual polyline outlines of the feather. So now what I wanna do is I wanna set our scale. So I wanna make this image a 30 inch circle with the logo inside. So I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to make it 15 inch radius, which is a 30 inch diameter circle. So now I'm just going to go ahead and go into units and I'm going to verify that we're in inches and we are. So let's leave it like that. So the next thing I want to do is import the rough logo, which you see it's very blurry, but this is what our base is going to be. So I'm going to bring this into AutoCAD right now. So I'm just simply dragging this into place and we're going to scale it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change the transparency over here to 50%. So now we can kind of see what we're doing back here. So let's go ahead and scale this down. Whoops. Scale this down within our circle. A little bit too big. And we'll just reposition this a little bit. Perfect, this looks good. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this feather and we're gonna scale this down to fit inside there. And now we're gonna rotate it because we see it's on a little bit of an angle here. Move this into place. So it looks like we need to scale this down just a little bit. So now to get the font for this logo, I actually went ahead and found an online free software that would analyze the font and tell me what kind of font it was. I then went to a free font website and downloaded that font. So we're gonna create an M text. And we're gonna write in blue bird. So we're gonna change the text height to four right now. And then we're gonna double click in here and we're gonna change it to, it's called clicker script. So that's our font. So now we can go ahead, bring it right here, and we can, once again, scale this up. Move this into place. Perfect, we're right on the money now. So now we're gonna copy this again, and we're gonna paste it, and we're gonna change this. This one is actually Times New Roman. Vintage, okay. Let's just turn this down to two inches right now and see how that fits. Okay, so that's close enough for me. That looks pretty good. So now we're gonna get rid of the logo. We see that everything fits pretty good. Just select it, delete it, and this is what we're left with. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and delete the words, and I'm going to do a save as, and I'm gonna save it as a DXF somewhere on my desktop. 
So this is just the feather. We'll save that. We'll go ahead and undo, get our words back. And now we're going to delete everything besides the words. We're going to change the ins units to zero and make sure we're in the top view. Now this is important for this next command, which is the text explode command. And this is going to turn our text into lines. This is important because we're going to go ahead and extrude this next. So I'm going to change to a 3D view, go to extrude, select everything. And now I'm going to drag it down 0.125 an eighth of an inch because this is going to be cut out of eighth inch hardboard. Next, I'm going to go ahead and you can see that's a piece. That's a piece. I'm going to go ahead and select union, select everything. And now they're one solid piece. Let's go ahead and change this to shaded with the edges to see it better. So this is what we're going to be left with when this gets carved out. Because we changed the ends units to zero, we have to go back and set our units again to inches. Save as, DXF, words, we'll just replace it. Yep. And that's it in AutoCAD. Now on to Fusion 360. So we'll go upload, select files. On the desktop, we have words and we have feather. Hit open, upload, and this will take a minute. Okay, it's complete. Close. We're going to open up the feather. Okay, there's our 30 inch circle and our feather. So we'll go down to manufacture. We'll say setup, new setup, select Autodesk three axis generic, cool, whatever. Operation milling, our stock box point is going to be the top left of our stock. And we're going to change our stock to be a fixed size box. And I'm gonna use a 31 inch by 31 inch by 0.625, which is 5 eighths of an inch thick piece of MDF. And that's going to be the stock that this gets cut from. Okay, so we see that our model is actually in the center. We don't want that. We want it at the top. So we're going to say offset from the top zero. Check that again. Okay, now it's at the top. Okay. Ignore that warning. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go in to engrave. We're going to go ahead, select our tool. We're looking at my half inch V groove chamfer bit. Let's take a quick look in here. General, just descriptions, the cutter. This is where you're going to fill out all your information about the cutter itself. Shaft, no data holder. There is no holder. And this is where you can fill out your spindle speed and your cutting speeds. My machine cuts at 20 inches per minute just because it's kind of reduced by how fast it can go on the Z axis because it's not as quick with that Acme thread. Post process is fine, no big deal, whatever, except. So we'll select this tool. As you can see, it brought all those values in over here. So everything's already set. So we're gonna select the geometry. This is what we're gonna want to V groove cut out. And you can see some of these areas are a little bit large. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, that's everything selected. Go to heights, bottom height, negative almost a quarter inch, that's fine. Passes, it's one pass, we're not gonna do multiple depths. Linking, keep tool down, preserve rapid movement, cool. Okay, let's see what it comes up with. Okay, let's go in to simulate and see what it does. Skip to the end a bit here. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now you can see we're gonna be left with some big chunks left where the V groove doesn't go all the way. Like it doesn't get rid of the infill. So we're gonna go ahead and do a separate operation to get rid of that. So let's go ahead, close this we're going to do a 2D pocket. So now we're going to select a different tool. I have here set up a eighth inch spiral down cut bit. Again, you see the feed rates are a little bit different for this as opposed to the V groove bit. So let's select our geometry. 
I'm going to select this. Now on each one of these, I can tell you that it wants to cut on the outside, so I'm going to have to go ahead and select this arrow to flip it to cut into the inside. Okay, so let's go over to heights, and the bottom height is going to be negative 0.25 because it's a half inch v-groove bit so the point goes down a quarter of an inch so that's where we want this to cut down to so let's see in our passes we're going to go one pass and the stock to leave we're going to leave 0.25 and we'll leave zero for axial stock so then we'll go over here and we'll change our linking we'll go lead-ins lead outs disabled and we'll change our ramp to 10 degrees let's hit OK and see what happens and let's simulate so you can see it's going ahead and getting rid of all these islands that were left by the v-groove bit which is exactly what we want alright that looks good so now we're gonna close this and we're gonna perform our last operation on this piece of stock so we're gonna go ahead 2D contour, and we're going to select the same tool, we're going to change the geometry to this outside circle. We're going to change our bottom height to negative 0.625 or 5 eighths of an inch, and our passes we're going to go multiple depths, we're going to go down 0.2 of an inch. So in linking, I don't want to lead in, I don't want lead outs, I want a ramp, 10 degree ramp. Let's hit OK and see where this leaves us. See? Okay, looks like it cut all the way through of our 5 8 inch stock. So now that everything looks good in our simulation, we're going to go ahead, post process the V groove engrave. So we're going to call this V bit bottom left 31 by 31 by 0.625 uh, feather that sounds good and you want to go ahead and make sure that g28 is not on so we'll just set that to clearance height that's good and we can save this so the last thing we need to do to this code is go into the g54 here Go to the next line say g0 z1 this is going to raise up the bit so our bit doesn't drag across the workpiece when it goes to start we hit save and we should be good to run this when we get out to the shop now on to post processing the pocket and the contour post process we'll call this 0.125 spiral down cut feather inside and clearance is good and we'll post this again g0 z1 save close this now the reason I'm doing these two in individual versus together is fusion for whatever reason says you can't do that now you got to pay for it so whatever just do it individual post process call this outside Feather, last step, post, desktop, save, <coughs> G0, Z, Z1, save, close this. Okay, so that's it. We're all done here. So now we can go ahead and open up the words. So let's go again down to manufacture, new setup. We're going to change to fixed size box. We're going to call it... 28 wide by 12 inches and we know the height is 0.125 that's the thickness the model should be centered within the stock and it looks like it's good and we're going to select the top bottom left make sure our x y and z are in the right directions and we'll hit ok so now we're simply just going to go to 2d and we're going to go to contour and we're going to select our bit which we're still going to have our eighth inch spiral down cut bit 
And now we're going to select our geometry. Okay, there's everything selected. We'll go over to heights. Okay, bottom height, we can throw on a negative point zero five just to make sure we cut all the way through our stock passes no multiple passes i just want it to cut in once because it's fully capable of doing that and we'll do preserve order that's fine and lead in lead out i don't want any of that i don't want it to ramp either i just want it to plunge right in and now if we go back to geometry we can go ahead and set our tabs so tabs are very important. We're going to say at points, tab width is going to be 0.25, tab height is going to be 0.1, and oh, I see I missed the G here. Okay, so the tabs, we're just going to place them because it's better than letting it auto-generate. It doesn't really know where it should put them. So anything that's kind of like a loose end sticking out, you really want to put a tab on or an inside circle that's going to become free and go flying off. You want to stop that from moving around. Okay, so let's hit okay and see where we're at. Simulate. It's telling us this is going to take seven minutes to do. Go to the end, look at our tabs. Okay, looks good to me. I don't actually want this circle here. That was just from the original model. I'm gonna leave this solid. But other than that, everything looks perfect. So we can go ahead, right click, post process, call this uh, text, 125 spiral. Down, down, cut, 28 wide, 12, 12, 125, hardware. All right, clearances, no G28. And we'll post this and we'll save this to the desktop and Change this again, G0, Z1 for our clearance, and we'll save that, and we're good to go. We can now run this on the CNC. At the table saw, I rip down some 5 8 inch MDF to a 31 inch square and mount the bottom left corner to my spoil board with a single screw. I then bring my router over to the bottom left corner and align it to the tip of my V-groove bit. I then raise the bit slightly and drive the router to the right side of the workpiece, making sure not to move the Y-axis. I then shift the stock to align with the tip of the bit and begin screwing down the four corners of the stock. Then I touch the tip of the bit down to the top bottom left corner of the stock and in the Mach 3 software I can click reference all home to set my zero positions. I click file, open and select the first program which is the feather v groove bit program. I take a look at the preview in the top right to make sure it's correct. I start up my dust collector and click cycle start. After the V-Groove program is complete, I bring the router over to me and take out the V-Groove bit and install the 1 8 inch spiral down cut bit. In Mach 3, I go over to the zero position on my X and Y axis, then manually adjust the Z axis until it touches the top of the stock. I then zero my Z axis. I then close the old program and open the next program to carve out the raised islands of the inside of the feather. After complete, I send the router back to my zero point and close the current program. I then open the last program, which is to cut out the circle shape with the same bit installed. A quick look at the preview looks good, and I click cycle start. The carving is now complete, and I can take the four hold down screws out, remove the scrap, and remove my finished piece. I do a quick cleanup of the spoil board with a shop vac hose hooked up to my miter saw dust collection line. I then cut to 12 inches wide on the table saw and 28 inches long at the miter saw on a 1 8 inch piece of hardboard. I can then fasten the stock with four short screws in each corner. I bring the router down to touch the top bottom left corner of the stock and in Mach 3 reference all home to zero all my axes. I close the old program and load the last program to cut out the letters. A quick look at the preview looks good so I click cycle start and let the dust fly. Once cut out, I use the random orbit sander to knock off the fuzzies and start smacking all of the tabs off with a chisel. I should have flipped the piece before cutting the tabs and sanded the back to remove the back fuzzies, but instead decided to sand each piece at my stationary belt sander. I 
I then sprayed on two coats of gray primer to all four sides of the letters. After drying for a day, I lightly sanded each letter front, back, and sides. To finish the letters off, I sprayed on two coats of dark gray enamel in all four directions to get even coverage on the edges of the letters. Back to the feather part where I have a quarter inch roundover bit set up in my router table to give the project a nice smooth edge. I hit the whole project with my random orbit sander using 120 grit. I had to chisel up a few points where the radius of the 8 inch bit couldn't clear out the points of the leftover material, then hand sanded the inside of the feather. After sucking up all the dust, I then applied a coat of white primer. After dry, I lightly sanded the prime surface and blew away the dust. I then brushed on a white melamine paint to all surfaces as this sealed up the MDF much better than the primer. Next I applied the blue paint to the feather, which I got color matched at the store and bought a sample size can for about $5. Next I used a roller and more white melamine paint to cover up the edges where the blue spilled onto the areas to remain white. The goal was to apply as little pressure over the feather as possible to maintain the defining edges of the feather and not lose the detail. I then took the scrap piece that the letters were cut from and aligned it in place before applying super glue to the back of the letters and perfectly placing the letters onto the back. This worked great and made the process super easy because of it. With that, the project is complete and made my secret Santa very happy.